This patient has an auricular hematoma. He needs an incision and drainage and a compression ear bolster dressing so he doesn't develop a cauliflower ear. Reviewing the anatomy, remember we have the helix and antihelix with the scapha in between, the tragus and antitragus with the concha in between. The cartilage in these areas of the ear get their blood supply from the skin. So if there's a clot preventing normal blood supply from getting to the cartilage, then fibrocartilaginous overgrowth will lead to cauliflower ear. The lobule of the ear does not have cartilage, so this area does not need to be drained even if it looks swollen. Comparing our patient's ears, you can see he is quite swollen along the scapha and antihelix and in the concha near the antitragus. When planning your incisions, you want to try to follow anatomic folds to minimize scarring, but that goal is really secondary to an adequate evacuation of the hematoma because who cares about scarring if you have a cauliflower ear? Do a sterile prep of the entire ear and the area around the ear where you're going to perform your auricular block. We did a whole separate video that describes in detail how to do the auricular block, but if you want the brief version, here it is. Use plain lidocaine, inject inferior to the ear, and we're basically doing a ring block. So on the anterior side, you're aiming up towards the tragus, and on the posterior side, you're just aiming to the posterior aspect of the ear. Always aspirate before you inject. Do the same thing above the ear, so you're basically forming a diamond ring-shaped block around the ear, and save some local anesthetic for where you're going to make your incisions because oftentimes this is not completely effective. For the first incision, we're gonna follow the fold of the helix. Make a superficial incision so you don't cut deep into the cartilage. Gently deloculate, and you can irrigate here as well. And then compress around the site to make sure that you've removed all the blood. These are usually acute, and so the blood is usually drippy and not very clotty. Now you really wanna get in here and use some pressure to squeeze out all that blood so it flattens back down to normal. You can see it's really a dramatic difference here once the blood is out. And it's still dripping a lot. That's why it's going to need a compression dressing at the end. We're doing a second incision. This one's going just inside the antihelix following that anatomic fold. Same steps here, gently deloculate. You can irrigate and then use compression to remove the blood, flatten that ear back down to its normal shape. Look how much better this ear looks. It's a miracle. Now the final steps are to close your incision and then do the ear bolster compression dressing. This is just a standard closure with a 6-0 nylon using simple interrupted sutures. You just need enough to close the incision that you made. The final step is the ear bolster. The way we opted to do this is take a dental roll wrapped in zeroform gauze and put that into the curvature of the ear between the helix and anti-helix and then some padding with fluff or four by fours behind and on top of the ear. A compression dressing is then wrapped over the top. Another way to do this is to take either a dental roll or some gauze and suture it through and through the entire pinna so it's cinched down on itself, preventing blood from reaccumulating. Either way, the concept is the same. We're trying to maintain the normal shape of the ear while applying constant pressure to prevent reaccumulation of the hematoma. Whichever dressing you choose, it's gonna need to stay in place for about seven days. And then the patient can return to have it removed and rechecked. Here's an example of an ear bolster dressing that was sewn through and through that I happened to remove on his recheck. And you can see it actually healed really nicely.